Vinny Perth is with us. Vinny, good morning to you. Good morning. How are this, you doing? This game against Greece, I've been saying that uh, it's hard to understate how important it is, but it's really seismic. It might turn out to be a boring nil-all draw and everybody, you know, we live to fight another day. But if we were to get tanked, very difficult to come back from. If we were to have a, one of those really important away wins, then all of a sudden it's like a shift in perception. Yeah, you'd like to think it's a big, um, it's a big moment. It's funny the game has sort of gone under the radar. Feel and like obviously when France come to town or there's a build up to it, and you're in the middle of Premiership season, this seems a little bit low key. Um, but actually, I just hope that the week they've had away in Turkey, um, it sounds like they've had a good week. It sounds like a lot of them. Um, I've been lucky enough to know a couple of internationals uh, who've played football and they, they don't like this window at all right most of their mates are on holidays and I know the normal fan don't understand that but it is a difficult time Premiership is over you're you're then looking at getting back into pre-season if you go back a late a week or two it can have a knock-on effect in different stages so it's a difficult window but the the mood music coming out of camp seems to be really good like I know they watched a film together and it was the Kevin Moran documentary oh, right. I believe okay. and like them, them things are great they can be thrown back in your face as we all know at different stages it was corny and all that stuff or can really help and but you get the sense there's 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 a good mood around the camp at the moment. This this has really helped them. I think it suits Stephen's style to be able to man manage people, have cups of coffee with them at different stages around mm. around the pool or wherever it may be. And I think this I hope this is a real chance for him to have a turning point and we'll f- soon find out because the match is really really important as you said and it's also an opportunity if he's going to make subtle changes to how the team plays to make sure that everybody fully understands exactly what they're trying to do yeah I think I think, and I think that's important having time on the training ground I know they played the 11 v 11 game again you can't really do that in them small sort of bringing lads in on a Monday ahead of a Wednesday game they're flying in throughout Sunday night some might have played on a Sunday etc so I think that's important and I know Stephen Style likes 11 v 11 there's lads in Dundalk with here that we like we we done a lot of 11 v 11s over them years and um, it, it was his way of, of implementing what he wanted um, and reviewing stuff and to be honest with you that's where like we'll all second guess teams and different things that's where you may struggle because he can see things in 11 v 11 and he's often made a change and went no that's not going to work and I'm going to play a different team where me and him will discuss the team a week in advance and then he'd make subtle changes as a result of that hard work on the training ground How serious were those games? I know was it a 70 minute match that the Irish team played in camp like are they competition for places? Is it take it a little bit easy or, or is it hell for leather? No they're generally done in I'd say uh, they're done in blocks I, I'd imagine the plan was probably 60 minutes uh, like sort of 15 minute blocks and they are competitive because people what, what you try and do where you get the holy grail is it's a bit like to use um, the, the the sort of rugby analogy the non-bibs are hugely important so I would imagine they'd one team playing like Ireland are going to play mm. and another team would be set up the way Greece are going to play so that's how you, you learn different things yeah. and if the non-bibs play really well and gives you headaches great and that's their way of getting themselves put the hand up so they, they're really interesting they're fascinating and they are played at a decent tempo mm. and normally whoever referee I've refereed them for years <laughs> it's one hell of a tough gig I can tell you that much uh, there were changes made by all accounts in the middle of the game yeah. the players were in one bib and then they were moved out if you're getting moved out of the, the first choice bib you're like uh oh or you're like yeah that's my job's done I'm, I'm happy there's, no there's lots of different ways of doing that so you put a fella like if 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 you know he's going to start and it, it, that's set in stone you may give the backup a chance okay. and also keep him happy a little bit to say I've had me a little chance in the team yeah. so there's a mixture of all them things I wouldn't read too much into that um, it's the night before the game they'll do they'll do a shape and that's when the team will be set and everyone will know exactly who they are you've picked teams for us but there, there's loads of different teams okay so yeah and I found I tr- part of me tried to get in his head uh, after 20 years I, I'm, mm-hmm. I don't know what I can get into his head so I suppose just me thinking was does Ireland have three different potentially three different ways of playing okay so I think in, in fairness they play with a back three and there's a couple of decisions like we have a lot of players now who are out of season championship players it's been four or five weeks we've got players like Dara O'Shea who's in the squad but hasn't played since the French game so 
in, in my teams I've left them out but I'm not there this week and that's and it, like if it was if that was happening out in Abbottstown you get a feel for how Dara is so you're not 100% sure or how uh, Dara O'Shea is but Dara Lenehan and that's where we've got real strength and depth in that position has been exceptional on the left hand side of Middlesbrough's defence so for me the back three of, of, of Collins, Egan and Lenehan uh, is is really strong as I said it could be Dara O'Shea in there Is the argument for O'Shea that he's, he's been in that shape before with those two lads so he knows yeah, no, and it wouldn't shock me if O'Shea started. It's just he hasn't played since yeah. the French game, and this is, you know, the other the others like Collins hasn't play, overly played lots of football. Egan has been very good uh, winning promotion, so it's like oh, Collins Delhi has played football at the end of the season, and there's some talk that he might be available for a move. Is, he, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't see him. Uh, I, I don't see that one. I, I just think it's O'Shea or, or Lennon. That's right. the way I, I would see. You've also gone for Bazuna. That's not a conversation at all, is it? No. Okay. no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't think Stephen would be very strong to his number one. Odelda and McLean is a discussion point. I, I, I hit the sound music from him in press and stuff is Odelda. He, he seems to like gives him attacking threat. I've gone with Mikey Johnson, and so this is the team where I look and go. I'm just trying to. See inside his head, so you go and win the game with someone like Mikey Johnson. Okay, um, you play an out and out winger off Ferguson who who can drop in, pick up the ball in that area. We've seen him do it for Brighton, and you've got someone that has that sort of uh, bit of dynamism in that final tort. Okay, I'd like to think he is going over there. We we've got to win this game mindset and the squad. So, Mikey Johnson has played exceptional as well up until recently. He's in really good form um, and playing week in week out. So that's that's where in his head I'd like to think that's what he does and it's Cullen Knight and Malumbi with Knight as kind of a 10 10 yeah joining in and giving us that running power and that's where that's where so the Johnson one off Ferguson for me um, is really interesting I think that could work I think that would be uh, Stephen's probably first wish in terms of uh, that style of player I think he loves the, the Mikey Johnson type of player and as I said he's seen him he's, he's playing regularly and that puts him for me Potentially ahead of others, but that's where it's it's this is it's a fascinating team and like we don't have a because he's had a week now he can come up with different solutions here and that's why I mentioned someone like I've left Smallbone out who's who's I think is going to become a hugely important player for Ireland and he he could get into the team ahead of Jason Knight as well at right. a, um um but because again. Ooh, we don't know what we're seeing um, Smallbones sort of relationship with him and Ferguson are very close and Stephen has spoken in the media about Matt Doherty, Matt Doherty and Smallbones sort of link up play so I wouldn't be shocked sort of to see Smallbone in the team but again when we go to the Smallbone team you see it makes us it's one change Mikey Johnson out Smallbone in but you end up almost with that sort of box midfield which I think could work away from home You've and you've spoken about it before you kind of expected yeah. him to go to one before this so the box midfield is, is Cullen and Malumbi with Knight and Smallbone so Cullen and Malumbi are level yeah. and deep lying and Knight and Smallbone are the high end of the box but what this gives you is Jason Knight's ability to arrive in the box and pick up a goal which is Smallbone is brilliant at it we need running power away from home but what where where we've lost um, Obenya is he joins in as a centre forward for Ireland mm. and has done it successfully and we're all happy with that small ball can do a little bit of the same and give you more sort of strength and depth in that midfield and I I think that's something they would have looked at so effectively it's it's a bit like if you go back to maybe Chelsea have done it it's it's a it's a 3 4 2 1 sort of shape with two two runners behind the centre forward and Knight and Smallbone and Ferguson dropping in that's exciting to me um, if, you have, if you have for that team as well Smallbone instead of Johnston do you provide Odouda with more space protection yeah well and, uh, you've got to remember Odouda is a is a sort of a winger mm. um, he's playing a lot of a wing back now uh, at Bristol but he is a winger as such so I, I I like I like I like that team of Smallbone yeah. and I, I think it's I think now this is where look we've got on to him maybe later this is where a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of players getting minutes and games and having caps under their belt that they go away and we've got options now in, in that 
that. So I like the idea of that I think it's um, it's something that could really work. But that uh, we c- you can call it a box midfield, or you can say two sort of that number tens, mm. giving us running power, but also defensively because we're going going away from home against a a four three three team. Right. So that was the other thing. Uh, th- are, are these tweaks based on what they expect Greece to do, or is this more we're going to try and get as much? It, ma- it makes sure we've got to get as much as what we have, but also Greece play a 4 3 3, and, m- and what Poyet does is um, we don't have a lot to go on and, and re- re- researching as much as it could because they ha- they've played Gibraltar and won a handy, but they play 4 3 3, standard enough, but subtle difference is in this front three you play one out and out winger which would probably be his right winger and his, his left sided is actually a centre forward who joins in Okay. so it's a bit like I, I don't link uh, to scare people link Greece to France but do you know that style with Mbappe joining in mm. as the second centre forward they play that sort of way and without the ball it can become a 4-2 four, four for Greece okay. so that's the challenge people will, will see that so that will be our challenge so therefore um, it's not that our to come up with a different system we know what we're going to play it is a back three four it's how the the front lines is configured and who's in form and who's playing regularly and is there a possibility that Mikey Johnson is still in the situation where he's a sub for Ireland because he just hasn't been around the camp enough or yeah yeah no and that, does uh, that matter it, it I think this week is different because if Mikey Johnson trains really well and is an exciting player in the sense of uh, on the training ground and you know they play these the, the 11 v 11 games and and he's he's joining in and drills where they're doing shooting drills he can convince that manager that I'm ready to play okay. and I think that's the type well, of manager he is Jamie McGrath kind of came from nowhere to start that game against Portugal that time and played really well and you know nobody yeah thought. and I think the reference McGrath is really important to say away from home or in like that Jason Knight has done it but McGrath's performance in Portugal if you remember from that sort of box midfield position was joining in but also the intelligence of the recovery run yeah okay. um, so yeah so uh, what's your third team and then I'll ask well, you well then the third team is dropping in um Obafemi and effectively it is it is similar team to what we've always had Obafemi will do the same role as uh, Chidozi or Benya I don't think he will I don't think he'll do that same role to the same level but basically one of the strikers dropping in into a wide area to give a little bit of defensive cover when Greece have the ball it's really Ferguson who'll do that role then isn't it that you're uh, well Ferguson will more likely drop into midfield and um, I, don't, I think I uh, uh, Obafemi would have to sort of probably operate off the right hand side of it as such and do as I said what uh, Chidozi does but again he hasn't played enough football yeah. and that's the problem with the whole Irish team I'm looking at I'm looking at the knock on effect by Matt, we're playing Matt Doherty, Doherty mm. playing Nathan Collins playing Dara O'Shea and it's it's for 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 the first time when I was sitting through this yesterday trying to come up with a team going you can't play them all if they're not playing you've got to find a balance and as I said that training week they've had is huge for them and we're in a difficult situation going into this game with the amount of people who haven't played regular football how do, you, how do you make up for that? Um, you, 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 to be fair to the FAO you get your, your yourself onto a plane and you get the, the lads to train they did meet in Bristol a week ago or two, two weeks, weeks ago yeah. uh, got, a, got a bit of extra stuff into their legs but it's really really difficult um, I would say Greece are probably a little bit better prepared they've got a lot of players who are playing regularly up until a later date than we do um, so it's difficult it's really really difficult and you can't play as I said too many players who haven't played regularly all together the Hardys in all three of your teams that there's no discussion there is there um, no only because I think he's he's sort of Stephen's man and he's go-to man in that position um, I, I I don't see Alan Brown hasn't played loads of football due to an injury yeah, he's been doing hydrotherapy over yeah. in Turkey as well so I don't see and it's not that we don't have huge options there I just see Matt Doherty starting that's where you'll make an allowance for Matt Doherty but you won't make an allowance for six players or seven players who haven't played regularly you've got to come up with that balance and uh, no Matt Doherty I'd, I would expect to start again if he's training is shambolic for mm-hmm. the week it, you'll have serious questions but I'd expect it's good enough from what I'm hearing mm. okay so what's your expectation um, I I'm going to say to you um, for no scientific reasons other than I actually fancy Ireland to win this week I think 
I think there's a huge turning point and it has to come eventually for Stephen Kenny and may not come he may be you know he may be like myself an unemployed coach but hey I, I expect this is a big turning point I think I think people have to realise and it's not to make an excuse before the game starts but um, we're playing against a team who are very similar to ourselves gone through all the same transition you go back to when Greece won the Euros they were brutal to watch and the public weren't happy and they've made a big change and they may own the ball a little bit their, their seeding is a bit or their their um, the three behind is in the world rankings so it's not yeah, it's not like we're not playing a, a minnow here and, and people who love Greece and won't know the names uh, but these are a good side but I have a good feel good factor about this Ireland team going into this camp I think a lot of the heavy lifting is done as I said I could have got the teams completely wrong but the difference now is you're talking about players who have caps uh, there's huge amount of heavy lifting being done yeah. to get them to this position now it's like and I hate the lazy word two steps forward one back we've had a little bit of that I, I would say sometimes we've had sort of uh, two te- steps forward or one step forward and one back it hasn't been as bad as people say but this is a this feels like a huge moment for, for this management setup. and I just really hope it goes their way. Yeah, all right. Vinny, good stuff. Thanks a million. Thank you. Uh, Vinny and myself are going to be watching the game live on Friday evening and off the ball on News Talk.